We have the qualified dividends up to the 15,800. The total dividends are at uh, 17,000. And we now have the Schedule B that has now been populated. Part one, as we saw before, is interest. Part two, ordinary dividends. The IRS wanting to know who you got the money from. Note that although the dividends could still be fairly low in dollar amount because you need to do this over 1,500, they are dividends, which is kind of like interest. It's the earnings that are being distributed to you. And therefore, uh, if even if you have a fairly low amount of dividends, that means you probably are holding on to a significant amount of stock because because usually they might put the money back into the business. A lot of companies don't give high dividends because they might be reinvesting it. So having dividends and interest, even a fairly low dollar amounts means that you've got significant investments generally, right? So in any case, that pulls in over to the first page. If we were to mirror that in our worksheet over here, we'd say, okay, Here's another B of A, and we said this was uh, dividends. We said 16,000 and 15,000. Is that what we did? Uh, or is that, that's too high. I, I went too high there, didn't I? So 12, 17, that's what I did. I, that's what I did. So that comes out to 17, going to page one, 1, uh, 117,000. 117,000 minus the 13,850 gets us to the 103,150, page two, calculating the tax now at the 16,900. So now we have the 16,900. Now, note that you could have some of these other boxes sometimes come into play, like total capital gain, uh, unrecap 150, section 12, da, 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 ordin ordinary uh, dividends under section so on non-dividend distributions so you can and then the foreign taxes sometimes comes into play as well uh depending on your investments so so usually the data input is fairly straightforward in software for that and the most common one is probably going to have this uh if i say let's make another one for like vanguard vanguard and say we had 2000 all of it's here and then we had capital gain capital gain distribution is is a common one and that's going to be the generally the idea is that possibly you have a mutual fund for example and the mutual fund actually sold some of your stocks because they're managing the mutual fund you didn't sell the mutual fund but the mutual fund is holding on to stocks and bonds and within the fund they sold uh they sold something and they had a capital gain which now they're distributing to people that it becomes taxable, right? So now we have to say, okay, what if like 500 